Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I am really, really excited about this one. It's with John Flaming, who is an artist based in Texas. His pieces are gorgeous. If you're listening to this on the podcast side, I recommend that you either go to johnflaming.com after this to get a chance to see his work or Google his name or watch the YouTube version, which is youtube.com slash Kevin's BBQ Joints. And you can find it. It's well worth watching it because he, number one, is in his studio. So you get a chance to see his studio. I show a number of pieces at the beginning. I'm going to be showing a montage of a ton of pieces. And at the very end, I've never done this, but at the very end, I'm going to show another group of pieces just so that you get a really, really good chance to see what his work is. It's, it's special. It's fantastic. It's specific to him. And I wanted to get his background and find out where he was coming from and the inspiration for his pieces. And he talks a lot about process, talks about the different mediums he uses. He talks about his love for Texas. And his work is a love letter to Texas and the people of Texas and the landscapes of Texas. We talk for more than an hour. He's such a genuine, nice guy. And I, I just, I was overjoyed and so excited to, to pick his brain about a bunch of pieces that I love. He also has a barbecue joint collection of pieces. And we go over in detail about those. And there's some specific ones with different people and how he did those. And the, the medium he used for that was just rad. It's really cool. I know you're going to love this. If you want to pick up any of his pieces, he mentions at the end, and I'll put in the links below a few galleries that carry his pieces, but if you go to johnflaming.com, and it's spelled flaming, but it's flaming, johnflaming, J-O-N, flaming.com, you get a chance to see all of his stuff, reach out to him on any social media, get to know him, and, and you can purchase pieces directly that you don't see on the website itself. But again, I can't thank John enough for taking the time. It's really killer. He's an important artist, and I know that once you check out his stuff, that he'll be an important artist to you, as well as just after listening to this, I know you're going to really like him and want to get to know more about him. And I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com with links to all the podcast, YouTube stuff, all this. Well, also, too, <laughs> I'm going to jump back. If you're an aspiring artist, he gives a lot of tips and kind of how he did how he did his journey, which you don't have to obviously replicate completely, but he gives a lot of tips and ideas and things that you can do so that you can follow your dreams. So <laughs> back to have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com, links to all, all the podcasts and YouTube stuff, as well as a bunch of other things. Uh, if you're digging these, please subscribe. That way you don't miss out. But at the end, stay safe, visit your local barbecue joint, and enjoy this with John. Those tools are beautiful. I just love, I guess I'm, I'm a junkie for tools. I love old tools. And Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the same way. And so those are paint-crusted, gesso crusted things that uh, i've been using for years and so they've got a nice patina to them for sure that's great do you use them often or are they they're the ones that you do use all the time yeah i use them all the time so when i'm creating backgrounds uh when i'm creating texture for my work um i always i almost always create a painting with texture before i ever put paint on the canvas and okay. so i'm building up lots of texture uh with different mediums pastes and gessos and things i'm building up that the background texture so that when i do come in and put paint on canvas when i'm you know scumbling pulling a paintbrush across mm -hmm. that canvas it's revealing whatever yeah, oh, color yeah. or textures behind it oh that's great can i keep that little portion in there i think people would love to, to absolutely yeah. Yeah, yeah i think it's and uh, and i guess we could we could start now and it's i john i i'm it's such a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you and i'm a i'm a big fan of of you in general and, and your work and i just it's i want to share that with people with everyone that uh, listens and watches these so thank you for well, i appreciate that. it kevin thank thank you for uh for asking me to be a part of this i appreciate it did you grew up in wichita kansas correct well, I didn't grow up there. I was born, born there. there. So, uh, no, no, but no, fair. And, and so we, uh, both my parents are from Kansas. And so uh, my grandparents were both, my mom's dad and mom, they were ranchers, farmers. And then okay. my dad's dad and mom, they also lived on a farm. And so both come from very rural backgrounds. And so, uh, but when I was five, our family moved to Texas. And so my dad got a job down here. And frankly, I think um, they were, my mom and dad 
uh, young with two little kids. They said, we're, we're out of here. We, we <laughs> don't, we don't want to be farmers. We don't want to live in rural uh, Kansas. By the way, I love Kansas. But I think at that time where they were at that stage of life, they were like, it made more sense. We don't want to do this anymore. We mm -hmm. want to go live in the city, uh, suburbs, whatever. And so we moved here when I was five. And so really, Kevin, this is where I grew up. And so I've been here for 50, I'm 58. So 53 years. So this is Texas is home. Texas is, is home. And, and but when yeah. they moved, did they move to Dallas? Because you live in Richardson, I think I read. Yeah. So we're in, uh, my wife and I are in Richardson. So we raised our kids here. Uh, and so we've been here for, well, I grew, I grew up in Richardson, really. We lived in, uh, when we first moved to Texas, we moved to Irving, but that was for a short period of time. So okay. I grew, really grew up in Richardson. And, and why, and I, I, it's a kind of jumping to the chase, but why yeah. is Texas so important to you? Cause it seems like, I, and I, I, I'm from Los Angeles, and, but Texas yeah. is, is in my heart and my soul. I lived in Texas for a year and okay. I want to move back. And it's, it's so, something so special. Why is it so special to you? No, that's a great question. So, um, for, for a number of reasons, but really Texas for me is this big, it's really a bigger than life idea, Texas, right? Okay, yeah. So it's, uh, it's mysterious. Uh, it's, it's, it's the, the stuff of legends. Uh, it is um, big heroes. Now, obviously, you know, Texas, as with any other <laughs> Um, state has its share of, of things that, that, that we're dealing with, have dealt with, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I love Texas and Texas is such, uh, for me, is such a cool place. I mean, there's of, of the five, is it five or seven of, of the different regions of mm -hmm. Texas, you could explore for numerous lifetimes and oh, yeah. not, not get it all, not cover it all, not paint it all, not write music about it all, whatever. And so to me, it's this place you could truly, I could truly spend a lifetime or more exploring this, this big state. And, and, and there's so much to it, so much history to it that again, you would never run out of material. Mm -hmm. No, so I love it. I love, I love the landscape from East Texas to one of our favorite places to go is, is Big Bend, big Marfa, ben, uh, Tur Turlingua, Alpine, uh, Marathon, all those all those places, it's really otherworldly. And a lot of my inspiration comes from that part of Texas. Definitely. I was going to bring that up because after doing these and, and I'm, I'm sure <laughs> I've done so many of these, it'd be hard to watch them all, but I've, yeah. I've talked to people in all different places around Texas. And yeah. I've started to realize that I, Texas is so vast and it's yeah. and the, and the, the landscape is so different. And where you're talking specifically that big bend area and Marfa yeah. and marathon, like those that seems like mythic to me because it seems so unique and it doesn't even seem like something like there's parts of California that maybe mirror parts yep. of big band. It's, it's fascinating. No, no, you're, it's, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Kevin. It, it is um, the first time I went there. Uh, it truly is mysterious, mythical, um, bigger than life. And uh, it is such you know, from Dallas to Big Bend, it's about 10 hours, roughly. Okay, <laughs> that's a drive. Yeah, so it's it's a haul to get out yeah. there. But once you're out there, it is, it is well, for, for example, I mean, the landscape is just incredible. It's it's mountains, it's desert. Uh, the Rio Grande, you know, is, is right there. Um, and so, uh, but at night, I mean, when we were out there, my wife and I were out there last year, at night, you can, uh, it's one of the darkest places on the planet, first of all. And so when you're out there, you've got a, a crystal clear view of the Milky Way uh, uh. and just, you know, billions of stars. And it's just magical. It really is a magical place. And so, of course, I'm going to walk away from that being completely <laughs> yeah, being moved. inspired. Right. It, and it, exactly. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, and we'll, we'll get, we'll touch back on that. I want to get to, I want to kind of get your path and, and you yep. originally, you were going to be a, a graphic designer. Is that kind of your path that you were looking towards Was, or, and were you drawing as a child? Because a lot of your yeah. works and there's specific, your works are different. There's not, not just that they're different, unique, like what, what you're showing a lot now, but yep. your work themselves have, you're, you've changed as an artist. 
Yeah, absolutely. Did, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of questions. It's, <laughs> it's an evolutionary process for sure, Kevin. And so, yeah, as a as a as a kid, as a uh, in a specific uh, moment in time that was kind of this catalyst moment for me. It's like, hey, this is this is something that. Uh, really was kind of a milestone moment for me, even though I didn't probably realize it at the time. But when I was five, we lived in Wichita. It was right before we we moved to town to Dallas. And um, sitting in my little Sunday school class next to this kid who was drawing jet airplanes, and so he's also five or six roughly. And so I'm I'm totally mesmerized, <laughs> taken by what this kid is doing. And so. This is um, 1967. Vietnam War uh, is is going mm-hmm. full speed ahead, uh, and so this this tanks and, and 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 airplanes, jet airplanes, and bombers, all that was kind of the thing. And so, as I watched him draw that, I said, "Man, that is so." <laughs> the drawing itself is so cool. The war was awful. The drawing was like, mm-hmm. man that is so cool. I want to be able to draw jet airplanes like that kid. And truly, Kevin, from that moment on, I've been trying to draw a cooler jet airplane. <laughs> and that jet airplane has turned itself into cowboys and other things. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but that was a moment where I thought, man, I, I want to be able to draw. And so that thread has been woven throughout everything crazy, I've yeah. done. So, and, and, you know, from, third grade through my senior year of high school I played football I love playing football uh, and the physical aspect of playing football but all through there and music was a big uh, thing for me coming yeah, from a good. musical family and so I played the piano and played the drums in a band in high school so music is a big thing for me still is a big thing for me um, but woven through all that I was constantly uh, drawing and creating and, and thinking in those terms and so I knew after high school, football was not going to be reality for, for me moving forward. And so graphic de- design, back to your question, uh, was one of the career day options, right? When I was a senior in high school, oh, yeah, right what right. do I want to do? You know, who do I want to be? And so graphic design. It's like the worst time art, to ask somebody that too, because you have no idea. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, I'm thinking, okay, practically speaking, what can I do? So it was, it was really, it was term, it was commercial art. That was what it was. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to do that. And so I ended, ended up going to um, college for that Texas State University Exciting. and studied that. And so when I got out of school in 85, I went to work for a design studio here in Dallas, worked there for eight years, and then in 1993, opened up my own design studio. So okay. I really used those eight years at the design studio where I worked really as um, postgraduate, but I'm getting paid for it. So I'm getting my... Yeah postgraduate degree, doctorate degree, whatever, but I was planning to do my own thing all along after eight years, like I said, 1993, did my own thing for 25 years. I created branding for FedEx and Neiman Marcus and Sony and lots of, lots of big companies Mm -hmm. uh, as we raised our kids. So we've got three grown kids, grandkids now. Uh, Was Was that a stressful job? You know, no, because I loved it. I loved, okay. I loved creating branding. I loved c- creating a brand from scratch for new companies and also creating brands within an already existing brand like FedEx and Neiman Marcus. Obviously, that's an existing brand, yeah. but creating sub brands within those companies. That was fun. And I loved doing that. A challenge, but, I'm sure. Yeah, all along, Kevin, all during that journey, that 25 year branding design uh, company that I had, I was in the background painting, drawing, okay. building, creating. So I knew at some point in the back of my mind, I want to peel off from that design brand thing and go full time fine art. Interesting. Wow. So the only way that was going to happen, Kevin, is if I do my full time 12 hour, 15 hour design studio branding job during the day. And then at night, once we had family time, uh, you know, dinner time, time with the kids, tuck them in bed, say prayers. Nine or 10 o'clock, I'd be ready to go to sleep. I was pooped. I mean, I was. I'm sure you were. Yeah. But. 
I'm thinking, hey, nobody else is going to do if this is oh, yeah. the vision, if this is the goal, nobody's going to do this. And so uh, I just made a decision. It was a choice. Hey, I'm going to get back up, go to the garage, which is where my studio was at the time. Go to the garage, flip the lights on, turn the music on and create. And so from nine to midnight or one or two o'clock in the morning, I was behind the scenes creating this fine art thing. And so I developed, you know, a style and then I started approaching galleries. They started approaching me. And so I'm building all of that while I've got my design studio. See, that's a, that's a great example for people because someone that's listening to this or working, I mean, listening to this or watching this might think, yep. you know, they, they want to be a writer or they want to be a musician or they want something, but you have to, you have to make that, that choice to yep. put the extra time in because no one, like you said, no one else is going to do it for you. And yep. it, a lot of times people, like, I think there's, I've often heard people say, don't quit your day. Like don't, yep. because people do quit and then they get frustrated because they can't pay the bills and they can't. Yeah. You were, you were able to juggle that. It's still not easy. And, and who yeah. knew what would come from that? What was your early work like? And, 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 and I talked to, <laughs> I I'm good friends with Kelly Andell and, and I know that she's a big oh, yeah. fan of yours. Sure. And, I, and I, absolutely. And, uh, and she, she's a fantastic artist and a, a photographer. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we, I had, I said, I'm going to be talking to John and what question, and, and she was curious about something that I was curious too, is that a lot of your, a lot of the threads in your work are oil men cowboys yep. the, the hard-working guys like the hard-working people behind yep. the scenes not the, the and so yeah was that something in your early work too that you guys were you were you always, were you always, always celebrating that or yeah for sure no, that's a that? great question by the way i love kelly's work Be- beautiful her, her stuff is wonderful and yeah, so great that, that, yeah great great stuff yeah so again growing up uh, in a family where grandparents were farmers, ranchers, my earliest memories uh, were of being on my granddad's farm, a ranch, and being around cattle and cattlemen. And then when we'd go into this little small town of Fredonia, which is a small rural <laughs> community there in southeast uh, Kansas, seeing the blue collar workers yeah. and these oil guy, oil, there was oil there uh, as well these uh, you know, rig guys and small town merchants, it just struck a chord. Mm-hmm. And I just saw this, um, I don't know, something stuck with me. And I just love the, the, the plight of the working man. Cause mm-hmm. I really consider myself uh, a, a working man. I, I consider myself a blue collar worker. Mm-hmm. And so um, that thread, because of that, uh, those those early memories, early images, I have really made that a theme. Yeah, it's my work. And, and I think that that uh, it resonates with a lot of people. And I think like there's part of it, like you said, that there's that myth, there's that like Texas, but there's also there's there's something about not glorifying, but but celebrating the yep. the hard work that it takes to make this country work and to make everything happen. And I've often wanted, like I, I interviewed a guy who was a trucker and, and I've, I've had friends that I know that, and those people like they work so hard, but no one celebrates them and no one. And it's, yeah. it's, it's nice to see it. And, and you've done it in such a beautiful way, but where you do, what would you remember your first pieces that you did? Uh, so, so the first pieces that I really did focused on, so I, let me back up. So yeah, I would sure. get in my truck. <laughs> I'm all over the place. I apologize. No, 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 no. I would get in my truck. And when our kids were little, I'd do this with our kids. We'd have um, what we call a day of just scrounging. I'd get, gather up our, our kids. We'd hit 100 miles in any direction. No agenda. We're just going. Oh, that's great. And we're going to go find small town cafes. We're going to go find old abandoned houses. Oh. We're going to go find <laughs> old barns. We're going to, we're just we're going to find what we can find, but the only agenda was to get out of town. Mm -hmm. We're not doing anything in the city. We're not going to the mall. We're going to go to small town America and go hang out with other farmers and and small town merchants and other people that we get to meet. And uh, so in doing that, I took many, many photographs of small town people old houses, old barns, old filling stations, et cetera. And those would become the subjects for uh, my paintings. And so my early work really is more of a, uh, more of a, 
realistic impressionistic view of small town Texas. Okay. And so you'll you'll those are those are some of the early works. Are they the pieces like that cover for the Samuel Beckett novel? Is yeah. It... Yeah. Okay. okay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I still, from time to time, Kevin will uh, will go back to that and revisit that. Uh, almost like a, a visual sorbet, just to kind of go back. That's good. That's clean, cleanse that that visual palette, and then move back to this more graphic because it really is moving. My art really is moving to more of a, 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 a simplified graphic, bold. It's not abstract yet. No, but it could move. It could there. be. Yeah, no, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. And Picasso was a great example of that. I mean, you see his. Oh, you see, you could see his progression. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And he never, he never truly got to abstraction, but boy, he got really close. Yeah. When I went so, to Norton Simon, I saw some of his works. This is 10 years yeah. ago. And it was so different than what I had ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. His it, later work, his later work in the sixties and the seventies uh, up until his death got so, super loose i mean mm -hmm. just super loose and they're not considered his finest works but i think they're beautiful I yeah mean, so do I. they're valuable re regardless i mean they're <laughs> yeah but, and they're sought after but they got really really loose and more they're still subjective but 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 they got more abstract uh and and certainly i can see that same trajectory happening happening with my work it's not intentional it's yeah, I was like gonna say, going, hey, so it's I'm, not I'm intentional. Gonna... It just happened. No, it's not. It just right. It just it's how great, organic... how cool is that? That that happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting. Yeah. How your mind, how your mind works. No, and here's what's interesting, Kevin, is that I see a lot of artists, and in, in, in it's not. There's no condemnation. There's no dig here, but I see a lot of artists who early on find a style. You know, they in, in, or, or they adopt uh, something they've already seen and they camp out on mm -hmm. so it's this uh you know realistic or impressionistic thing and they do it super well mm -hmm. they're great at it um and they find a following and they just do it yeah. and that's it right mm -hmm. and just keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it my attention span i'm just like hey if i see a feedback i gotta go get that feedback and, and puts markings on. I love something. those feedbacks that you just posted. Those were killer. They're oh, so thanks. cool. So cool. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's all over the place. And it's, it's, um, it's like the beauty and junk. I, I, I'm taking yeah. photos with my phone. If someone went through my phone, they'd say, what are you taking? I think there's a, but there's so much beauty in yeah. the things that are, that are rough and not. Yeah. Exactly. No, no, no. And, and, and I'm, I'm right there with you. So for me, it would be boring to just do one thing and just continue to yeah. do it for, for me, that's right for somebody else. Um, and it's a perfect fit for them. It just doesn't work for me. And, and so anyway, yeah, yeah, I know. And that's, and that's like, there's certain people need that consistency or that Absolutely. sort of like rhythm. Did, that, yeah. That, yeah. And then you're just, you're just a different, a different person. Then when, when you decided to go headlong head first into uh, fine art, what yep. did your wife say? What did you think? Were you, but I guess you were, you were sort of showing, were you showing them in some galleries? So that way you felt confident that this would work or like, how do you know when it would work? Yeah. You know, so, so there's risk in everything, right? So with, with, with a new venture, there's risk with everything. I, so I knew there was risk, but it was calculated. And so I knew because I had started 25 years prior, I, my runway was longer than most. So it wasn't like I just said, Hey, I'm closing the branding doors today. Tomorrow I'm opening up a fine art, art door. I had those doors open for a long time. And so, yes, to your point, I already yes. had gallery okay. representation. I actually already had pieces in three museums. Uh, I had huh. a big following of well-resourced collectors. Mm -hmm. So my confidence level was up or is up, continues to be up. And this was about five years ago when I made the break. But it still was scary. It was still yeah. a scary proposition because I will be honest with you, most artists, most fine artists, um, it requires a second job, another job, whether it's teaching, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's true. Right? Go, go teach. Great, great thing to do. Uh, or work, it's, work somewhere else 
while you're pursuing your passion or whatever. And so by the grace of God, I've been able to make that, you know, I've, I've been able to make that cut uh, or sever that, that relationship I have with branding and design and move forward 100% with the fine art um, in big part because I had, I'd been building that business yeah. behind the scenes already. And I think having a following and galleries and museums, et cetera, that certainly was a big help. But when I, when I decided to devote 100% of, the, of my time to that, man, it just blew up. Yeah, that's, so, that's, that's great. A, that's, a, that's, a, that's really nice. And it doesn't always happen that way. But when you, right. like, did, uh, I lost my train of thought on my, my, my next question. But, it's, <laughs> but I, what, I, what I wanted to know was if with, with the different mediums, like were you, because you've done like when I've, and I'm going to look at notes every so often, acrylic, oh, yeah. on, ma acrylic on masonite, you've done etched, etched acrylic on oil. Like, uh, is there a medium that you prefer? And were at the beginning, were you just doing acrylics or, and I don't mean just, but were you? No, no, no. So I started, so years ago, I started with watercolor, which is an extremely difficult medium. And oh, so yeah. uh, I didn't realize it, but I started with watercolor uh, and, and really got that down. And then started because I was scared, or, you know, 30 years ago, I was scared to use oils. I'm like, it just it frightened me for some reason. But then maybe because it takes, I, I think I, I'm this, I was the same way, too, because it takes a long time to dry. Maybe you're thinking it takes is. a long time to dry. And it just was like, I don't know. It's like, oh, I got to mix that with something else. And then <laughs> seed oil. Yeah, there was more chemistry to it. It was mm -hmm. like, no, I, I understand water and color. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, once I got over that kind of fear hurdle of working with uh, with oils, I love now I love them. Okay. I, I prefer oils, but on these etched acrylic pieces. And by the way, I just came up with that term. I don't know if it's a it, it's just something <laughs> it I came right. up with. It sounds right. <laughs> yeah, but so what I do is while the paint is still wet on the cam canvas with those tools that you mentioned earlier, I'm scraping and scratching. Uh, and creating this imagery and so but what happened what has to happen there is it has to happen quickly because that acrylic is drying quickly and so that image especially when you get on a large canvas that image has to be done probably within you know 10 minutes oh wow that whole thing has to be done with so preparation is key there okay I've got to be completely prepared, also allowing for serendipitous things to happen, accidents to happen along the way. So it's a push and pull. It's like a back and forth. And sometimes when I get done with it, I'm like, ah, perfect. And then sometimes I get done with it, I'm like, ah. But then it it's just like, okay, I'm putting paint back on it and we're starting over. I guess, yeah, you could do that. Is it the negative space that makes the, the, that's attractive in that? Is that... You know, sometimes I'm, I'm using both. I'm using, like, sometimes I'll load down a, a lighter color and put dark on top of that and then scratch through to reveal the lighter oh, okay. color. And sometimes it's just the opposite. And sometimes it's doing both on the same canvas. Sometimes it's mixing acrylic, uh, etched acrylic, and then oil crayon on top of that. And so I'm constantly experimenting with different mediums I'm constantly experimenting with different materials to paint on. And again, back to my earlier point, that's what makes it interesting for me. Yeah, yeah. That's what makes it exciting. And, and I remember my question was, it was more of a, of a statement that you're still doing branding sort of because you do stuff with like the Gage Hotel and I've seen you with, and with different things that you've done. And I'm like, okay, you essentially kind of weave that into your world. In a way, do they, and I guess they would contract you. Is that they, they come to you and say, we love your work. We love, or is it just a relationship that you've had with these people or? Yeah, no, no, great question. So, so it was never my intention to mix fine art with more of a commercial side. I really wanted to, to sever all of that. But what I did was really set for myself certain criteria that if, if I really enjoyed the, the people I was working with, if I loved the brand, if the money was really good, and if it was going to be fun, I'm like, 
of course I'm going to do this. this is going to be great. So John Wayne's a great example of that. So out in Newport Beach. So I got was contacted a number of years ago by the John Wayne family. I said, hey, man, we, we love what you're doing. So it was actually Ethan Wayne and Anita Swift. Who, so Ethan Wayne is John Wayne's youngest son. And then Anita Swift is his granddaughter. Who, who we've become wonderful friends and they're great people, but they contacted me and said, Hey, we love what you're doing. Uh, would you be interested in helping us promote the John Wayne brand with some of your modern cowboy things? And so the initial conversation was, uh, Hey, let me think about that. It really was, I want to make sure this is a good fit for y'all and for me too. So at the end of the day, it was just like, okay, John Wayne, these are great folks. I, I love the project. I love the brand. Yeah, absolutely. We're doing this. So that was a fun collaboration. Tecovis Boots here in Texas. Yeah, I've seen those on my list. Yeah, yeah. So just did something fun with, with those guys. Again, answering that same criteria. Anyway, I'm approached by, it's funny, I'm approached by people often who want to collaborate or do this co-branded thing with my work. I will tell you, Kevin, the majority of those I turned down. I would imagine. I would imagine it probably it's endless. I get weird things too, and I'm not yeah. even like an artist. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's not. A, it's just not a fit, mm -hmm. right? It yeah. has to make sense. So anyway, I, but, I, but, but I but I do think that, and I think a lot of people will accept things because they're at a certain point in their career where they they have no choice. They where they want they hope that they can make income. You have the opportunity. You're at a good place in your career where you can. Yeah pick and choose those things what yeah and by the way just just to, just to interject here yeah man I, I i've sat in both seats okay you know I, i've been in both places and so i totally understand uh a, a, a maybe a younger person or a younger artist saying hey i i got little ones to feed oh yeah i've got rent i've got a car payment and so the, again man there's zero it kind of, there's no condemnation. It's like, Hey, you do what you got to do. And I think if so you I put your heart into it, then it's, yeah, yeah I, it's true. And you're, you're, you're faithful to who you yeah. are and presenting yourself properly. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I that's a good, I'm glad you said that because I think that's important to people. If there's someone that's listening is they, you have like, sometimes you have no choice. There's exactly. And, and I consider myself very, uh, I mean, absolutely am grateful, thankful, blessed, to, to be in this place because there've been years of struggle. I mean, it's been years of struggle. And so that would be the other thing I would offer up at this point to a younger person that might be listening. It's just like, man, uh, embrace the struggle, em True. embrace the, the hard work. And, and, and the other thing, the other choice I had to make Kevin was just like, Hey, I can either sit down and watch this, three and a half hour Dallas Cowboy football game or I can turn the TV off and go out and work and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and create this thing that I want to create. And believe me, I made the mistake of just sitting there watching that Cowboy game. And at the end of that Cowboy game, I go, man, yeah, especially if they lost, side. right? <laughs> um, by the way, I don't watch, we don't watch any of that anymore. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I, we still love, you know, all, all that, but we have really tuned a lot of the distractions out. So many distractions. Yeah, because they are, there's, and again, there's nothing wrong with those things. It's just for me personally, they became distractions and pulled me off focus and pulled me off vision. Um, and so anyway, there's a, there's a time for us to go relax and have fun, enjoy a glass of wine and, and, and a nice dinner and, and other things. But the majority of the time, it is focused on what I love to do. For someone that's listening or watching this and wondering, <laughs> kind of, I, you're you're a wonderful artist, and they might wonder why I'm talking to you. You also have a barbecue, a, a collection. Is it? And it was called Meat. Can you? What was it? What yeah, was the it question? was just. It was. Just, I think the the title. Of yeah, the, the show, full title was Meat. Uh, yeah, it was Meat, and it's just it's like a uh, a oh, visual uh, journey of. Yeah barbecue joints and i don't know i can't Steak remember houses exactly. and or something yeah something there. something like that it was i'll put it i'll put it below for people to yeah. a link to the story but it's how did that come about and then i want to talk if you have time to talk about some individual pieces that, and i'll pop yeah. them up on the screen if you're watching if you're listening to this on the podcast i would recommend in the beginning jump back jump to this the youtube version because there'll be a lot of stuff to see 
But yeah. how did you, how did the barbecue thing come about? And, and also too, I watched a video when you went to, is it fat boys or fatty? Is it? Fat, yeah. Fat boys up in, it, it looks like it says it, it's C O O P E R is the name of the town. It looks like Cooper. Yeah. yeah. But I was quickly corrected when I went there. It's Cooper. <laughs> Cooper. It, it, I think it's Cooper. That's how they, the locals pronounce it. So I said Cooper, Cooper but anyway. No, you know, yeah, that, that makes was, me feel better because I have been corrected on so many places in Texas. It was, it's, oh, yeah. not, it's Elgin. It's not Elgin. It's like, there's all, yes. <laughs> there's exactly. a lot of, like, yeah, it's, just, but so, so it's in Cooper. But yeah, I want to, because there was something, what's, maybe my real question is, what's yeah. so important about these small little places? Because you celebrate a bunch of, with your drawings, you, a lot of different, I mean, with your fine art, um, yeah. a bunch of the, like truth and different ones, but, but what's yep. it about the small little places that you love? Or... Um, you know, again, it goes back to, it goes back to that, the guy who's struggling to make it, the guy who's, um, he's a blue collar working around with the, with the barbecue series, working in a smoky environment. And he's just gutting it out, trying to figure this thing out. And I'm drawn to that because I get that. I mean, we, mm-hmm. Um, we did not grow up. I did not grow up in a family that was well to do. I mean, we were not, we were not poverty stricken, but we, uh, were, and and so there, there was the real struggle just to, just to, to make ends meet and to live and, 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 and put food on the table and all that kind of stuff. So I get that. And I appreciate that. And I focus on that because of that background. And I think I'd like to take those places, those people and put them on a canvas Mm -hmm. and potentially on a gallery wall. And then even beyond that on a museum wall and take, take what they're doing, which is, you know, take what they're doing, this blue collar endeavor and put it in a place that's perceived as. Yeah. It's a nice juxtaposition. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly. This contrast. It's the best. I love it. Yeah, yeah it's this beautiful juxtaposition contrast of, you know, a smoker in a barn and taking that whole thing and putting it on a museum wall. All of a sudden, you've got this, and one is not better than the other, but you've got this juxtaposition contrast. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's really cool. No, that's what I, and that's what I love. I love the off the beaten path places, yep. not just in Texas, but in North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, yep. all these places that are just a, a few roads over. You have to yep. kind of know where it is. The a wood floor that maybe is dusty and dirt. It's just so there's something nostalgic and wonderful about that. And I think you so, and then, yep. and a number when I made the, I was making a list and I'll put a list in the comment in the comment section below of all the places that you feature a number of them are closed which is sad but it's yep. a chance to celebrate them via your work which is nice and there are most of them are available on your website too exactly yeah a lot of that uh the meat series the barbecue series i do have on my website yeah so by the way i'm terrible at keeping up with my website in instagram is what i pay attention to uh, you're doing a darn good job with instagram i'm, I'm impressed <laughs> well it's fun i don't know I, i'm having a lot of fun with that but yeah i'm not really great about keeping up with my website but there are a number of those pieces on there yeah and that's and and you've also done some is that charcoal of like of aaron franklin and roy Perez and is that were those charcoal drawings you did or something is that so interestingly enough and maybe no, no, you're, you're right i actually kevin took the 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 burnt coals from the barbecue really? pits you're kidding me really and that's use so that i think a lot of people don't realize that but use that burnt wood charcoal to create those pieces and so it's I actually from from those those pieces so i need to post some of those on the on instagram yeah did are those pieces were they part of that meat series or were they separate of that or were they for an auction or something it was part of that series and because I think because I had so many paintings, uh, the gallery space was completely filled with these oil on canvas paintings. I just didn't have room to show those. So I actually have those in flat files. And I think that show was in 2012 or 14 or 15, something like that, but it's been a few years ago. But I have those pieces and I've, I don't even know that I've ever showed them. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've that shown was- a few of them, but not many of them. 
Yeah. Yeah. But, and I've, I've seen them. I, I just did a lot of research for this. And so I was looking at, yeah. you find them like in different corners of the internet, different things that you had done. And those yep. are really neat. Okay. I didn't know that you used actual charcoal. That's, and do you usually, because you had mentioned earlier, do you usually snap photos and then from that, then yeah, do your, a lot of, yeah, a lot of time. I mean, my camera is my little buddy. When you know, when the iPhone came out, it's like the eighth wonder of the world. I just <laughs> thought the iPhone was like the coolest thing. And uh, as the camera continues to get better, I just take better pictures. Not because I'm a good photographer, it's because it's a better camera. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm taking reference photos all the time. Okay, are you a photographer as well? I think I'd rather you do. Love you photography, know, right? I do. So I, cr- you, I I'm not a real photographer but i like to take pictures and so i created this whole series called the texas tv series where i've taken this old westinghouse nice 1960s westinghouse tv i gutted the thing and i take it all over the country all over the state of texas not the country and shoot pictures with my iphone through the tv and then whatever is behind it you know looks like it's in the screen oh how have i not seen these okay yeah, so it's on my Instagram. So yeah. you'll, have to, you'll have to push it. Put, you have to put a couple of those up because I will for sure right now. Yeah, yeah they're. I think it's a cool concept, but anyway, I love fun, it. Yeah, fun images. Yeah, I love seeing. There's something special about seeing old TVs too. There's it yep. brings back such a wave of memories and and the, and the fact that like kids don't have and that's like I hate to say like kids these days, but like to, to think that we had to like actually get up and make change. Exactly. Well, there's a time obviously where there's no tv but there's but the change yep. the channel and it's just weird too to think my grandma's well past she she died many 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 years ago but to think yeah. that there were no cars when like she was born in 1909 it's just i was right. fa- i was always fascinated talking to her thinking there were no automobiles when you were born that's <laughs> there's yeah, hard, something hard. about history and, yeah. and what what's why 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 did you recommend this uh goodbye to a river why, why was this uh so special I forgot to you? about that yeah, no, no. A, a thank friend, you for the recommendation. A friend of mine gave that book to me, and it's been years since I read it. So, I, but it just—it was just a beautiful, so beautiful. Yeah, beautiful piece about the Brazos, and, and it's just—I um, don't know. It just kind of encapsulated this Texas thing, and the Brazos is a bit, you know, here in here in Texas, it's a very well-known um, uh, body of water that. It, you know, to have a home o- overlooking the Brazos, that's that's a cool thing. That's that's on my wish list. That's on my bucket list. Is have a home uh, overlooking the Brazos uh, River. But it's such a well written piece, and I recommend it to friends because it really pulls you in. And I really think you start to get you you start to to to, to feel what this guy's feeling. Mm-hmm. And you start to sense what he's sensing. Uh, and I don't know. It's just one of those books you, you just yeah. you can't put down. You really it feels like it. he's talking to you, and it feels like it's yep. and there's there's words that you know but you don't know. And you're, it's it's definitely it's yep. it's it's well done. And I and I've ordered a couple more books from him because because Good. of you. And I and I try to order from my local bookstore. Not yep. nothing against Amazon, but I like to support it local as much as I can. Well, can we talk about a couple of your pieces about when Ab- we go? Absolutely. Uh, can we talk about uh, Savior first? Yeah. What was so, the impetus for that? Yeah. Uh, you know, Kevin, for me, I mean, my, my faith is really foundational for me. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not in any way. Uh, I don't, I don't use the Bible as a, as a hammer. I'm really a relational guy. And so I don't post political, religious, spiritual things online or on Instagram not, not because I don't believe in things, but because uh, it's like a bumper sticker. It's like, hey, I'm just going to tell you how I feel and then you can deal with it, right? That's not me at all. And so I'm really a relational guy. I, I wanna, I've got friends that are atheists. I've got friends that are agnostic. I've got friends that are all over the place, spiritually, relations, relationally, you name it. And I love them all. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and we have great relationships, but the relationships are great, not because we agree on everything. The relationships are great because we allow each other. We, 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 first of all, I, 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 you know, it's, it's James 1, 19 through 20. It's a be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. And that really, I've got to bury that in my heart. For me, that's a personal thing. It's like, hey, 
I need to listen first. I need to understand where you're coming from. I don't need to, I don't need you to understand where I'm coming from. Share your story, your journey with That's me. great so, advice. Yeah, so I can better understand mm -hmm. you. So let me listen well and let me be slow to speak. So if you say something I disagree with, let me just zip it. <laughs> let me continue to listen. And, and let me be really slow to be angry. Is there a time to be angry? Of course. But me in these relationships, it's this civil discourse, I think. And I'm, I'm on my soapbox. I don't know if you can see it or not. <laughs> no, but, it's, out of, it's out of frame. <laughs> yeah, civil discourse. I mean, I think we've lost this art. I agree. No, I think this is great for society right now. Yeah, it's this, this beauty, this beautiful thing of being able to sit down with people that we totally disagree with and just say, hey, man, I'm for you. I love you. I'm thankful for this relationship. Man, at the end of the day, we can walk away from this and, and disagree. But I just want you to know I'm 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 for you and I love you. And let's continue to to break bread together, you know, and that's a great thing. So all that to say, Kevin, my faith is foundational. And so Savior really is Jesus going after the one, leaving the 99 to go after the one. And, and it's, it's for, for those who might not know, it's a spiritual reference. It just says, you know, as, as the shepherd, Jesus is just saying, hey, I got a lost sheep somewhere and I've got these 99. I'm going to go find that lost sheep. Well, in this context, I've, I've used Texas, yeah. you know, ranchers, blue collar worker, cattle uh, and that whole environment, that rugged environment. Uh, to paint this picture literally and figuratively. And so it's this rancher with his calf. And then so, symbolically, you've got all these pieces around him, the, you know, the, the snake at the bottom, this big storm and rain coming in from one side. I'm not looking at it, but I'm just kind of remembering it. All, all these elements uh, that pose potential threats to this newborn, this calf, uh, and it's rancher coming along just saying, Hey, you know what? I got you. I got you. I got you. Let's, uh -huh. let's get to, let's take you to a better place. Let's take you to higher ground, so to speak, uh, and reconnect you with mama or reconnect you with, with your family. Uh, and so that's really what that is. It's, it's, um, uh, it, it's, it, 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 it's basically my, uh, version of, of that scripture. And was it, was creating that, was that something you had in mind for a long time that you wanted to create a piece like that? Or did it just pop? How does something nope. like that does it just pop in your head? Or? You know, I was, I was doing some research. This is kind of the way things happen for me. Yeah, I was curious. doing research on a project that was totally separate from that and came across this really beautiful image, this black and white image of a rancher with, you know, the calf in his hand. It was just like, bam, it's like, I like both exactly it was one of those moments it's like ah and so i i did a little save image on my phone a little screenshot just to save it and <laughs> then i think about three months four months later started to do my sketches and create compositions and, and kind of went from there so 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 with your larger pieces are you generally sketching them by hand with pencil and then, and then from there you go to because it, it yep. would be difficult to just go straight to yeah, so I'm, I mean, I've got a little saying, it's like happiness is being prepared. So for me, uh, and, and by the way, I've got a lot of, uh, not a lot of, I appreciate abstract art and I appreciate a person that just goes right to the canvas and says, bam, we're getting after it and here we go. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a, you know, some things I do like that, but most of the time I'm, it starts here and then it goes to sketch paper and then I tighten it up on sketch paper and then I scan that sketch into my scanner, into my computer. I pull that into, I use Adobe Illustrator. Mm -hmm. I pull it into Illustrator and from there, I take that sketch and build on top of that sketch in Illustrator, ah. my color studies. And then from my color studies, I'll print that out. And then I used to just stand with my color study and on a big canvas, redraw what I'd already drawn. <laughs> yeah. And that was like, man, wait a minute, I'm wasting time. I mean, if you look back in the 14th, 15th centuries, artists were using convex and concave lenses to project images onto a That's canvas. True. And saying, hey, wait a minute, why am I reinventing this? So I got an old school junior high projector for 25 cents on eBay <laughs> and had it shipped to me. It cost 25 bucks to have it shipped, but I of paid course. a quarter for it. 
And so I use the old school projector. It's probably it's somewhere. It's it's I think it was, oh, yeah, is that it's right back there. The blue? Yeah, it's right there. It's this old old blue. It's got a cowboy hat on right there. There's okay. a hat hanging on it. Yeah. But I use that to project these images and, and then I, I, I paint from from that. So oh, that make that makes a lot of sense. OK, oh, that, yep. that's interesting. I was just curious if like how. And so there's so do you do any abstract painting or most is it all? So it's all. And, you know, what, what you're saying is very akin to how you did this, how you created your career. You thought about it first. You planned yep. it out. It's just that's that's how you're made up. That's how you do things. That's. Yeah. And again, again, Kevin, no, no, you're absolutely right. But again, always allowing for the happy accidents, right? Of the Bob Ross. It's like always allowing <laughs> for this, these serendipitous things and, uh, you know, having a plan, but holding it loosely. Oh, you that's know? great. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. There's a lot of quotes. For, there's a lot of takeaway quotes from this. And I like that you weaved uh, Bob Ross into one of these uh, interviews. <laughs> You're the first one. And I, I, I appreciate it wholeheartedly. <laughs> I grew up with that man and I was very yep. sad when he passed on. It. <laughs> yep. so, um, so let's, and then the, then the one, so then the cowboy with the rattlesnake, is that simply, are you, do you have a fascination at all with rattlesnakes? Is that something that you only that they scare me to death. <laughs> yeah, now, that's good. Not, not, so, so when I was in school down in the hill country, down, it was down in San Marcos, Texas. And so it was Southwest Texas State at the time. They've simplified it. It's Texas State now. But anyway, I would go out in the country and I was in an old abandoned house one evening by myself. I did a lot of these things. I'm, I'm kind of a loner. I'm kind of a uh, an isolationist, although my wife is, a, is an extrovert. And so she's pulled me out of that in a, in a lot of ways but so a lot of these these little trips I would go on would be alone so I was in this old abandoned farmhouse uh one evening in the summer and just walking around and and you know part of the floor is missing this is in a house that was built in the like late 1800s so just abandoned you know cobwebs you know stuff all over the place and I went to step out onto this back uh, porch and then off of that porch onto the dirt and when I took that step I heard I heard the rattle and he was underneath that house uh. and so my foot was you know my foot was down and so I knew even though I'd never heard that sound in real life I knew I said man all that says to me is danger <laughs> yes get out so I pulled my foot up slowly and walked out so all that to say, Kevin, I, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm respectful of mm -hmm. snakes. I'm not scared of them necessarily, but I give them their space. And so um, the rattlesnake piece for me, you, you know, you, you can look at it in a lot of different ways, but I'm not against creatures. As a matter of fact, I love all creatures and I'm not, uh, I'm not a hunter. I actually am very respectful of all living, living creatures, but but in this in this picture, you've got this cowboy who's like taking this critter yeah. down, and the only reason he's taking him down is because this this snake poses a threat for him and yeah. his livestock, horse, whatever. Uh, and that's really what this is. It's just a guy doing his job. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he would have let that guy go. He would have let that snake go. You know, hey, you go do your thing. But if you if you if you're gonna mm -hmm. threaten me my livestock etc i gotta deal with it yeah that's kind of and i'm dealing with it so and yeah. i respect that and i, I think there's people yeah. that kill animals to kill them like it's or to well kill any snake that they see where you know we're yeah. encroaching on their land too like i was hiking yeah. in the mountains one time and there was a snake that was crossing and people were throwing rocks at it and i said let's let it cross it was yep. giant it was a tenth it was it's, yeah. it's gonna go it doesn't it's not coming to get us it's just Yep. It's just, it's, it's interesting. No, I, I, I love, I yep. love that piece so much. And then, and then Thanks. your, um, there's a million pieces we could talk about, but big text, what's the, the yeah. fascination? How, what's the background for that? Well, so we, we grew up as a family going to the state fair. And so big text is really etched in this collective memory of visits to the state fair. And so I don't know if you know this or not, but big text really started out as Santa Claus. And so no, in Kearns, know. in Kearns, Texas, and this is another one of those small towns, it's K-E-R-E-N-S, but they pronounce it Kearns. <laughs> of course. Kearns, Texas, uh, back in the 50s, 
the local business, there was a local businessman that wanted to promote um, his store at Christmas time. And so he created this huge awesome. Santa Claus and on Main Street there in Kearns, Texas, erected this monster Santa Claus. And you can go online and you can see images of him. I'm going to look for it. Yeah, and super cool, super cool image. Uh, and so as the story goes, Christmas season came and went, used Santa Claus to promote his business. And then Santa Claus ended up going to either a, a local farmer or something and got stored away somehow. And, and, and I, I don't know all the details, but I know kind of the, the key po points here. Somehow the Texas State Fair, the folks at the Texas State Fair got wind that, hey, there's this giant person. How can we use this giant person at the state fair? And so that's when big text became big text after he was originally Santa Claus. So did he have a beard? Did they, did they remove parts of him or was yeah, he so Santa Claus had a beard, had the hat, had the red suit and all that. So he had to deconstruct <laughs> right from Santa Claus to become uh, big text, but the early big early versions of big text are incredible. I mean, they're beautiful. If you look at images, uh, it's just this, as they say, it, it, this tall drink of water. So, so think, think of this tall, lanky cowboy. Unfortunately, now big text doesn't have that same aura. Yeah, he's kind of, I want to say, short and dumpy. Which, <laughs> like me, I mean, I'm not. He's, I'm short or shorter. I'm five ten, so I'm average. But I want Big Tex to be, you know, he's six ten. Yes, of course. Yes. And so now he just is not that same look. Anyway, that's beside the point. Really, the point is that I became fascinated with this bigger than life Texan. And so each year I try to do something with Big Tex in some form or another. And so over the years, I've created different images of him, very stylized images very stylized, of the text. Yeah. And so I just love it. Yeah. Do people, when you're creating pieces, are people um, already bidding on, like, do people, like, say, say you're coming out with a new collection, do you yeah. already have people that have bought these or like that, that not to get inside base, but like, but is it yeah. something no, where... That's that's like, a great question. Like, so, so say someone's listening to this, that's a fan that wants to purchase your work or your original works. How does that happen like for the future? You know, great question. And so um, th there was a time where I was doing commission work right now. I'm not simply because, not because I don't believe in commission work, simply because uh, my days are completely jam packed with just doing the work that, yeah that I'm wanting to do. Yeah. And so with the modern cowboy series that I'm currently doing, yeah, I already have people who are saying, Hey, please let me know gotcha. when the next one's coming, because we've got a home in wherever our ranch house, or we've got what, you know, they say, Hey, we need, we, we need and want one of your modern cowboy pieces. So really for me, and it's, and they're not saying, Hey, we want to commission you. They're just saying, Hey, what do you got coming up? we, we want to know about We're interested. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if Which there was is, someone that was interested, right. would it behoove them to shoot you a line to say, Hey, and, and create a relationship and talk to them, get to know who they are. And then, yeah, okay. And I encourage that. I absolutely encourage that because I, I, because I've had people come up to me and say, man, we, we really wanted to reach out to you, but we just decided we didn't. I said, no, 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 reach out, yeah. call, you know, call me, text, DM, Facebook messenger, whatever. And let's just start that dialogue and start that conversation because again, relationships are really part, part of what I love about painting is developing these relationships. And I've, it's funny, Kevin, it's interesting. I'm getting calls from, and I won't name names. I'm getting calls from people. You would, you would go, what? <laughs> I mean, it's just individuals who, um, I'm developing relationships with, I thought, I never thought, oh, I did, I would be selling art to that person. That's interesting. No, I can imagine that's wild. That's yeah. wild. Which is wonderful. And, yeah. but, but then it's, it's, uh, and, and not that anybody, nobody's more important than anybody else. It's just kind of fun. It's a, it's fun to develop relationships with people I know, people I don't know. Um, people that are artists and, in their own craft like it's yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, yeah yeah absolutely so I love 
I love developing relationships with anybody and everybody and just um, and, and whether they buy a painting or not, it's just cool. You know, I'll start following a lot of these people on Instagram and we, you know, like yeah. you know, Kelly is a great example of that. You know, we appreciate what each other does. Um, so it's the relationship part of that is, is a big part of what I love and this whole narrative and story that's being built all along the way. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some, and it's amazing that there's still unique things to do. There's still unique ideas and ways to look at things and to go about yep. things now. So what, yep. so right now you're working on the modern cowboy is that where can people see your work other than online? Cause is there, is, I think in Tyler, does is Tyler still have. So they just finished a mu- So the museum of uh, the, the Tyler museum of art just okay. finished a show for me. Uh, I think it came down about a month and a half ago. Okay. So right now there's no museum shows which is kind of nice because I had two museum, <laughs> big museum shows back to back and, and, and it was, and I'm so grateful and so thankful, but it was, it, it kind of wore me out a little I bit. I can see that. No, I can imagine. So now I can kind of step back to spend time in the studio, painting, um, preparing uh, new, new work, et cetera. Um, and so really there's a, there's a gallery in Fort Worth called art space 111 that has some of my pieces right now. Uh, Sarah Foltz Fine Art in Houston has okay. some of my work right now. Uh, for many years, David Dyke Fine Art here in Dallas has okay. represented me. I don't think they have any of my stuff right now, but really what I tell people is I say, just call me, contact me first. And if there's something specific you're looking for and one of those galleries has it, I'll just, I'll direct you yeah. there. Uh, a lot of the work that I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm just selling it through me mm-hmm. uh, so yeah just reach out to me and i'll i'll we'll, we'll figure and you can out sh- and steps. you ship it out in a very dependable tube that will yeah, the, pr- the prints are now the the uh yeah the prints are all sent out in these super heavy duty uh tubes the fine art yeah, the I was curious paintings about that, yeah. those are usually shipped out in custom crates and I so would those so. are those are at a price point that really requires that you're sense. building building specific uh size you know cushioned crate to to ship those pieces okay that's uh, i was yeah. gonna, that was my next question is how those pieces yeah. were, were shipped out i'll put a link below if if as things come i'll change i'm gonna have a companion blog piece so okay. as time goes on i'll include different restaurants or hotels or places that have your work so that way people if they're around and they realize oh i'm at, i'm near this hotel or near, the stuff you did for the gauge is that stuff at the do they have pieces there so the v6 bar which is the name of the bar that's part of the gauge hotel so the gallery that represents me in houston sarah folds fine art uh came to me and said hey would you be interested in putting some of your prints at the gauge hotel um and I said, absolutely, because again, I love it down there. It's a yeah. beautiful part of the country out in West Texas. So I said, absolutely. And so they've got maybe 10 or more of my prints uh, down there. And, and again, I'm very careful about where the prints go. But as far as my brand dovetailing with what they're doing, perfect fit. Yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. makes it makes a lot of sense, and yeah. and I talked I talked to um, to the guys there, and it was it was interesting to to hear all about what they're doing and and the, and how they've grown it. It's it's it looks yeah. like an ideal place to go visit and kind of shut your brain off for a little while. And, oh, you would you would love it. my wife and I are actually going to be back there in November, uh, down in Terlingua, then back at the Gage uh, Hotel. Yeah, if if you get the chance, the opportunity, it's well worth the visit. And I've bookmarked, I think, outside in the area around there near Big Ben, isn't, I think there's some other hotels that are kind of, not a hotel, but it's like these, not yurts, but like modern, yeah. like, I guess glamping, I don't know, I hate to say that term, but it's like those, there's, there's some places that you can go where you're, where you're in that blanket of Milky Way, but you're also Absol- in. Oh, you know, absolutely. Amenity. I mean, you can stay in a teepee, a yurt, the place we love in Terlingua, uh, is a place called Willow House. I think I bookmarked that. I think that's what I did, yeah. Oh, man. So my wife found this a number of years ago, uh, and they're almost like these concrete Donald Judd pods. Oh. And then there's, there's a big main house. But it's very modern, very minimalistic, which we love. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of in this half 
moon shape that overlooks uh, Big Bend. Oh, that's and you know there's this common area fire pit, and so we just love on a cool fall evening to go spend time down there, hang out, meet new people. Uh, you know, take in all the stars and the galaxies and the Milky Way. I mean, it's just incredible uh, and peaceful, very quiet yeah. out there. Uh, but Wi Willow House is one people, I, I mean, I can't imagine somebody not liking it, but it's such a cool place. Yeah, I'm sure there are those people that need to stay in a, like a really nice 15 story, <laughs> but there's yeah. something, there's something there's really special. Yeah, there's a place for that, not your language. <laughs> yeah, but it's also, yeah, it's nice to visit for, but it's, there's a million things we could talk about too, but I, I just, we've spoken for yeah. about an hour, a little more, and is there yeah. anything that, is there anything that you want people to know about you or your work that we haven't touched on? Oh man, that's, that's a big, that's <laughs> a, a loaded big question. giant question. <laughs> and we're like, uh, it's 730. There's, <laughs> there's, there's probably about a thousand other things, frankly, but uh no i would just uh i would encourage again we've already touched on this that if somebody wants to learn more about the art or has questions about the art or is interested in possibly you know buying a piece of art man feel free to reach out um i'm, I'm very approachable and, and and again love building those relationships um and answering there are no dumb questions answering any questions about hey what's the medium used there um whatever whatever the question might be I'm, I'm happy to to start that dialogue yeah and that's and and what's the proper way to pronounce your last name I was, yeah no no, no uh, yeah it's it's a great question i wish people would ask me that more should, often. should i should i guess <laughs> i think it's is it, is it is it fleming it's fleming yeah so okay. so it's a it's a german russian um origins dutch also because if you think of fleming flemish or flemish there was a dutch name but the german russian roots apparently okay. there was an umlaut over that a that we kind okay. of threw it different um and so it's really growing up it was with my grandparents it was more of kind of a flaming i just say fleming you know but if you call me flaming, yeah, flaming, flaming is probably you get flaming, that whatever, I don't care. Uh, it's easy to spell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And so uh, it, it's, it, but no, it's a, it's a great question. Like if you were a hot rod guy, you could make your name John Flaming. Like if that was, like it could be a made up name, but that's your, it's Flaming. It's your real name. No, no. Somebody asked me last night, as a matter of fact, he said, hey, did, is that a made up name? I said, no. But my son, who's a musician, uh he actually embraced i mean he he actually changed it because he liked flaming he's so his name is jake and so he's he's jake i mean when he answers the phone it's jake flaming and i said dude that's that's cool man as a matter of fact they're about to have a have son a so we're about to have our fourth grandchild who'll be oh, a son on friday and his name is jet so his name <laughs> jet is flaming. jet flaming i'm saying man you can't get cooler than that that's, that's like really that's a coolest really, name. that's a really cool name oh well, congratulations on that wow that's anyway, that's yeah. exciting stuff so you got to be on my show and no i'm, just, I'm kidding no, no, exactly all, all great things <laughs> in one week <laughs> that was okay no but that's though no, that's that's really exciting and i was just, i was curious because as i said it out loud i was realizing oh well there's probably different ways to pronounce your name and then i'll put there's so it's john flaming um dot com and then uh yep Oh, okay. Well, cool. Well, so, so nice to meet you and to, to share time with you. And maybe we could do a part two sometime when you, you know, Absolutely. It's, but I would, and I de I'm definitely going to, I'll put links to all the, to everything below and, and to some articles okay. and to some video you did like some things that when you visited that barbecue spot, do you, is there a barbecue place that you frequent a lot near you? You know, so 10, 1050 barbecue, which is actually in Richardson, mm -hmm. a buddy of mine owns it. And then another guy, man, another buddy of mine from high school manages it. As a matter of fact, I was there today, but it's a local uh, barbecue mm -hmm. joint called 1050 barbecue. Awesome barbecue. There's a and they place. have a lot of stuff, cryovac, like, uh, uh, vacuum sealed to go. I think they have, they sell a lot of I think they have a cold I think section. they probably do. I think, I, think they they, do yeah. I think you can order it online. Yeah. I know they have a a takeout catering and all that if you're ever down in lexington texas <laughs> yes. go check out snow's barbecue for sure yes it's only open on saturday the line is a mile long 
uh, literally, it's probably when my dad and I were down there last. Um, I mean, I think now it's probably a three hour wait. It could be longer than that, but only open on Saturday. Uh, Tootsie Tamanitz is, is the pit master. She's 83, four, something like that. There've been many documentaries. You, I, I'm sure Daniel probably talked about Tootsie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Daniel Vaughn. Um, but uh, she's still doing it, man. She's still managing those pits along along with her crew. I mean, she, there, there are a lot of great folks down there for sure. Um, but she's just a quick, a, a gift to us. She's like, she's our, our our royalty, definitely. Oh, have you, now, have you interviewed her? Actually, I've talked to her twice. I was lucky enough. Good. I just I just talked to Carrie. I've been for like two years. I've been trying to get Carrie because I wanted to get how how he got every, how he got Tootsie and, and yep. got it all going. And I talked to Clay, uh, Clay Calgo. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I talked yeah, yeah. to Tootsie twice, which was amazing. And like, I was almost awestruck speaking with her and it was on Clay's phone. He was able to bring it to her. It slid halfway through and she didn't real. it was, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was wonderful. And then I talked to Clay and then he was dirty and wonderful. Uh, Cause yeah. it's oh, like, yeah. always, yeah. And, but then I finally yeah. spoke to Carrie and uh, it was sort of the, the epitome of learning and he had talked about how the netflix series came out and when that came yep. out people have to get you have to get there now before 5 a.m or you don't get food i bet yeah saying that's amazing and it, it yeah it's it is nuts but it truly is um it, it truly is some of the best barbecue of we've we've ever had and and you know once you've had really really great barbecue um you start to judge every other place, mm -hmm. gauge every other place against that barbecue. And so I love when Daniel does his top 50 barbecue soon, yeah. list, which I think is coming up. A yeah. new one's coming up here pretty soon. It should come out sometime in October because it's for the November issue. So that's, yeah, that'll exactly. cause a lot of, uh, of uh, fervor <laughs> in Texas. It, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, but, um, but that's, so, so then 1050 is something that you, you do frequent them a lot because you're I, I do just because they're they're in my neighborhood. I mean they're in Richardson yeah. and so it's close by. And again, the 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 guys that own it and run it are friends. That's nice. Yeah. And it's I mean, I would tell you it's excellent barbecue. The environment uh is really cool. So it's more of a it's more of a minimalistic approach in terms of the interior design. It's not like a classic roadside barbecue we got old metal signs and all this stuff all over yeah. the place the design of it is really uh not that those those are, those have their place they're beautiful but this is more of a finely tuned finely executed concept with you know big black and white uh photographic images on the wall oh, cool. an old 1953 pickup truck right as the centerpiece in the in in the in this massive room that they've got so it's it's a really uh it's a great experience great barbecue i highly recommend it excellent well thank you yeah. for sharing everything and, and being so forthright about things and humble yeah. and it's just, it's nice it's I've, I've loved your work from afar and now that thank i have a couple you. pieces i'm more than excited and i am uh, i'm moving relatively soon so i'll be able to frame those and get those up i appreciate you um, i appreciate you yeah, reaching out and doing doing the interview, and you know, so so thank thank you very much. I feel very um, honored to be a part of, of what you're doing. Oh, well, thank you, and I and I, and yep. in a way, small way, I'm trying to document the Texas world and the barbecue world, and yep. and humanity <laughs> in all of one swoop. So it's yep. this is something that I hope that you know someone that doesn't know your work will get a chance to see it, and I think it's it's definitely it's some of my favorite work. So I'm happy that to share that with. Well, thank you, buddy. I, I, mean, I appreciate your, your generous and kind words and support. Uh, certainly, um, I know you've got a couple pieces, and so thank you for that. Oh, and, that. I'm excited. Yeah. That's a, at least it, it makes me aspire to work hard so that I have a larger house that I could put at least. There you go. Hey, uh, keep going. Keep going. Yes. <laughs> keep, keep working hard and promote. No, uh, have have a, have a great rest of your week. Thank okay. you again, John. Thanks so much, hey. and have a great evening. Yeah, Kevin, thank you, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. All right, take care. Yeah.